just dive right into this. Um, I don't know if you know if a lot of you know about Trading Concepts. Um, uh, Trading Concepts has been in business since 1994, and um, I recently joined Trading Concepts in 2009 as a student, and then in 2010 um, I came on board and um, started helping Todd Mitchell, the CEO, uh, put together pretty much revamp his entire mini course and make go on go on completely online with it um, and then from there we've just kind of grown and um, so if you haven't checked out our website there is the website tradingconceptsinc.com um, and a little bit about myself again like Reed had indicated um, I've been uh, the e-mini trading room moderator since 2010 some, some of that was also the Forex room I've uh, been involved in the markets for about 10 years now since 2005 uh, I've trained and mentored hundreds if not thousands of students uh, in both of those rooms as well as some one-on-one -on -one. and uh, you know pretty much my goal is to teach students a, a methodical approach for identifying high reward low risk trading opportunities and help students develop the skills necessary necessary to successfully trade the markets okay now today what I'd like to talk to you about is just some bits and pieces from the opening bell income strategy it's a strategy that we use on the e mini s p to profit within the first 90 minutes of the trading day okay so first off actually let's go ahead and take a look at how the strategy is performed in our live e mini trading room since year to date okay this is just year to date and there's a couple things i want to point out here because i think this is key okay look at this you can have a decent winning percentage and you might even be able to maintain 80 80 percent but what's key here and what provides edge is you know a obviously a winning percentage with good reward to risk you can see our average profitable day is 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 greater than our average losing day okay and we've had 67 days that were profitable out of 29 uh, and 29 losing days out of 96 so you can see we're only about 70 percent but the key here is um, is reward to risk and this is just year to date okay and this is one con okay so we typically trade one to two contracts that is it um, this is pretty much the equity curve you can see uh, this this is just the reality of it um, you're, you're not going to have you're not going to have winning trades all the time. You're going to have some losing trades, but if you can maintain that consistency, you know, with reward to risk and a decent winning percentage, that's all you need if, to have edge in the markets. Okay. So now let's go ahead and dig in and and see what this is all about. Um, this strategy um, pretty much involves a three-step process. Okay. What we do is multiple time frame analysis to determine a big picture context of the market. Okay, that's first and foremost. And then we look to identify key trading zones that we're looking to trade off of. Okay. We also do a pre market analysis to, def to identify whether or not we want to look to fade zones in more of a consolidation type market, or whether or not we have the likelihood of having a trend day like the other day. Where we're looking to, you know, maintain a one-sided um, bias in the market for that day, and to help us do that, guys, we're going to use market internals on the E-mini S&P. They're there, so we might as well make use of them. I mean, we make good use of them too. They are very powerful, especially that nicey tick. The New York Stock Exchange tick is probably one of the most powerful. Once you know how to read it, it's I think it's the most powerful indicator out there. Um, to determine who's in control of the market, and identify momentum, um, kind of really gauge what's going on, and then we're, with that, we're gonna we have some intraday trading tactics and trading strategies for entering and exiting our trades at or near our key trade zones. Okay, now I'm not going to get into all of this because there's too much to dive into, but one of the things I want to dive into is how we establish our key trade zones. Okay, we'll get into that. But to uh, take advantage of the market within that first 90 minutes, we use the market internals to determine the likelihood of a directional move shortly after the opening bell or whether or not it's more favorable to fade key trade zones. Okay, We're going to avoid the middle chop. How many of you guys have 
um, entered a trade only to see it sit there. And you, you realize um, you know, you, somehow you, you seem to enter um, right in the middle of everything. Um, that's pretty much where most traders lose money. Um, what we're going to be looking to do is, is enter more favorable reward to risk trades, okay, when the probabilities are stacked in our favor. And we're going to use, we use the market internals to look under the hood of a stock index to gauge what the individual stocks that make up that index are doing. So we can determine the true health of a move in price. Because sometimes you get a move in price and then it just fizzles out. Okay, you, I'm sure you've seen that. And obviously using that nicey tick in conjunction with price action and uh, market breadth, we can, you know, get a, a real good indication of who's in control or if control is shifting. Okay, so um, we employ the most reliable methods for taking profits. Okay, we use we actually use market breadth uh, to determine whether or not it's likely we're going to see uh, more of a consolidation type of market where we're looking to take off at possibly one R or one and a half R. When I say that, I mean one risk. So what we're looking for, we're looking for minimum two to one reward to risk, okay? We want at least that. Um, if we can get one and a half, we'll take the trade. Uh, but there are times that the market just it doesn't provide that. So we actually use market breadth to help determine that. And then we use it to help determine when institutional buying and selling is taking place. Okay, so we know whether or not to go for the bigger gains, um, like the other day and even like today, uh, versus smaller gains like on like last week, okay? We use the nice tick to read the overall sentiment, buying pressure and selling pressure. We can actually we actually use that to also help timer entries in more momentum type trades, um, and we use it to determine pullback sentiment extremes to identify potentially, you know, the extent of the pullback. You know, one of the questions I've always asked, I've always wondered is, um, when I first started trading, is like, well, how far you mark, you know, the market's going to pull back. I mean, you have an idea, but you can use that nice tick to help timer entries like that. And then, not not to mention too, it'll actually confirm a breakout and then and or confirm short term exhaustion. So we have ways of of reading the nice tick um, to identify those. Okay, and we have several intraday trading tactics and trading strategies implementing this methodology for knowing when and how to trade off of those key trade zones. Okay, including entry stops and trade management. I'm not going to get into all of that, but I want to get into like the gist of how we come up with our key trade zones because I you know hopefully you guys can take away from here um, that and if, if anything it gets you thinking um, about multiple time frames and the bigger picture context okay because the markets are fractal in nature and they display similar price action on different time frames for, for example when you're trying to determine whether is bullish or bear ask yourself you know what time frame okay because look in a chart, okay, even the S&P, you can see it's in an uptrend, all right? But when you look at this three-minute chart over here, you can see if you're just, if, you, if you're trading in a vacuum on that three-minute chart from 9.30 Eastern time to, you know, 4.15, this market's moving lower, but all it's doing is pulling back on the bigger time frame, okay? And look, we're, we've got prior resistance in here, prior resistance, which was broken to the upside, becoming new support, and that's all it did. So we've got strategies for taking advantage and getting in on these moves in here, especially on that, right after the market opened in here, we've got a strategy for getting in on this, on this move near the low of the day, okay? A lot, a lot of day traders make incorrect trading decisions because they're not aware of that bigger picture. This used to be me. I, I, I traded in a vacuum off that three-minute chart, but now I consider that bigger picture context of the market. Okay, you've got to consider the larger time frame areas of support resistance because that's where your bigger players come into play and those those institutions participate. So just keep that in mind. Always look at the larger time frame charts to get that bigger picture contextual view of the market. Okay, so what are the things that we're looking for in the opening bell income strategy? on each time frame to identify our key price levels and determine our key trade zones. So let's get into this. These these four things, if anything, that you get out of today, um, start looking at these four things, okay? 
Previous price action, guys, influences current price action. In order to identify our key price levels, what we're looking for is major areas of support and resistance. Okay, old old resistance becoming new support, old support becoming new resistance. Okay, we're looking for blow off bars, and I've got examples we'll get into. Okay, topping tails, bottom tails, hammer patterns, shooting stars. If you're if you're familiar with candle candle patterns, okay. And we're looking for those price bars that have pretty much caused major reversals, okay, several days to weeks, depending on which time frame you're looking at. We're looking for expanded range vertical bars or expanded range bars. You know, for example, your normal range bars might be like this, and all of a sudden you get some institutional buying. We're looking at these bars in here. Typically, the high and low will tend to act as support and resistance on those expanded range bars, okay. Gaps in the market. Okay, or launching points of a move with conviction. I mean, gaps are pretty much exp they're they're the same thing as expanded range bars, just overnight. Okay, we're looking for consolidation extremes, where several significant highs and lows are found near at or near the same price levels. Okay, now let's dive into this a little bit more. Right. Typically, when resistance Resistance will become support when broken to the upside. Support will become resistance when broken to the downside. Okay, we're looking for price levels which were previous turning points to help pass, to help identify major support and resistance. So look at this chart in here. Okay, um, and I'm just going to work back from the left because we're, we're when we when we when we come up with our key trade zones, guys, we're looking at the most recent price action. And if you look back here. You've got some highs in here, okay, right in there. Um, you can see right in here how you've got prior support right in here, becoming new resistance right in there, okay. You can see how you've got prior resistance becoming new support, support, and it gets broken to the downside, and then look how it becomes resistance over here. Okay, this is just pure price action support or resistance. All right, you've got prior support here, acting as support in here. You got resistance right in through here. See how it acted as support over here once broken to the upside. So these, this is just the gist of what you're looking for. This is just one of four things. Okay, um, and then you can fine tune it by looking for uh, these blow off bars, bottom tails and topping tails. Okay, a bullish blow-off bar, bottom tail is a hammer pattern, bearish blow-off bar, topping tail is a shooting star. Okay, but what the significance of these is they indicate price rejection. Okay, so for example, on a hammer pattern or bullish blow-off bar, lower prices are being rejected and buyers are aggressively buying at successively higher prices and vice versa for a shooting star or bearish blow-off bar, topping tail if you will. Higher prices are being rejected, and sellers are coming in and selling at successively lower prices. Okay, let's look at this. Let's just jump and look at a couple examples here. You can see right in here, you got these topping tails. You got a topping tail right in here. So as this market's moving up, prices are being rejected here. Prices are being rejected here. Okay, so you've got resistance in there. All right, you see the price rejection in here. On this bar, see that price rejection in there, and you. One of the other thing too is confluence. When you've got that lined up with prior support or resistance, we we just went over the you know support or resistance, um, and when you when you take that and line it up with you know prior support being broken, becoming new resistance and so forth, it just makes it more powerful. I'm just trying to get you to look at it this way. Look at this bottom tail in here. See that rejection of lower prices? Now, after, overnight, obviously, something happened. The market gapped down. And once we gapped down, we traded much lower. Um, but you can see the rejection in here, right in there, rejection in there, rejection in here at these highs, confirming this is resistance. Okay, this is support, becoming resist, resistance. See that rejection? So if you want help in identifying, you know, one of the things, it's like, yeah, I've heard the term support and resistance, but it's like, well, really, when you break it down, how do you really 
you know, come up with those key levels. So now you've got some things to look for. Okay, you got these topping tails, to, and start looking for these when you're when you're trying to define that some point of resistance. Okay, see these topping tails in here. See how this became resistance, which became support once broken to the upside. Okay, and then it acted as support over here a couple days later. All right, see this rejection in here, rejection in here. You got this rejection in here. Okay. You got an expanded range vertical bar in here. That's one of the key concepts. We're going to talk about that in a second. Okay, expanded range bars. Bars. So you've got bottom tails, topping tails, expanded range bars or gaps. Okay, that is when you have these expanded range vertical bars. That's indicative of institutional buying and selling. Okay, we can't move the markets. We don't have those financial resources, but that is. When you see those, you have to look at this as, okay, these expanded range vertical bars are pretty much revealing what the institutions are doing, buying or selling, okay? So in the gaps, like I said, they're the same thing. They're just, it's just overnight, okay? Who is in control overnight? Pretty much look at it that way. Here's a good example. And what I was indicating, see these, these three bars in here? I mean, you can kind of look at this as one big expanded range vertical bar, but at the same time, you, get, you do have expanded range right in here. See how that high, the high of that bar ended up acting as support? Even over here, you got the low of this expanded range vertical bar. See how it acted as support over here? And it acted as resistance over here. Okay. Same thing here. You got an expanded range bar, vertical bar breaking down through the support zone and the highs, the high of that bar ended up acting as uh, resistance right in there. You can see how this ended up acting as support. So you don't see the pointer. Okay. Um, do, you, does, do you guys see the pointer in here? Yeah, it's coming through fine on my end. So, okay, all right. Um, I know I, there's nothing I can do about it. This is as big as I can get it. Um, apologize for that. But now look at this. You can see this was actually, you could, this, this uh, expanded range vertical bar to the downside is pretty much confirming this as resistance. Okay. Um, and same thing here. You got expanded range vertical bar to the upside, acting as support over here. But the thing is, you got confluence with these expanded range vertical bars and prior support and resistance, okay? The other thing we're looking for, guys, is consolidation extremes, okay? Where we've got several significant highs and lows are at or near the same price levels. So extreme lows of consolidation occurs when we got, you know, pretty much repeated buying at or near the same price level, and we got responsive buyers continually bidding that market up. And extreme highs are just the opposite. We've got sellers coming in um, and um, uh, coming in and, and offering a market lower. Okay. Here's an example. We got see this consolidation in here, in here at resistance. Well, actually, this whole thing is the consolidation right in here, even. Um, and um, what is this? Three days. You got three-day consolidation in here, um, but your consolidation extremes confirmed with prior. We got, again, we've got prior resistance becoming new support. You know, a lot of it has to do with just prior resistance becoming new support and, and so forth. And you can use the what we just talked about to help define those levels and and or confirm those levels. The thing is, is this is subjective and discretionary. So if you narrow it down to just looking for those things, you know, you can you can look at a chart and say, oh, that looks like support or resistance. Well, how do you narrow it down? You can use the bottom tails, expanded range vertical bars to to really narrow down, you know, that support or resistance zone. I, I heard a previous mentor I had said you can't draw support or resistance with a pencil. You know, you got to draw it with a crayon uh, because it's it's an area. It's not a price level. It's an area. Uh, but you can get pretty accurate by using um, there's expanded range vertical bars, bottom tails, topping tails, gaps and whatnot, highs and lows. Um, you can get pretty accurate at drawing these. 
okay and one thing to keep in mind the obviously the bigger time frames is going to provide you know the larger moves so daily key trade zones major key trade zones off the higher time frame chart will act as more significant support or resistance okay and you're going to get bigger moves off of them bigger price reaction okay we that 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 example that i showed you about um, the market pulling back on that 30 minute chart when it pulled back into 30 minute support you saw that reaction we had on there on like the first couple slides so by now guys i hope you're i you know you're seeing that identifying these key price levels in the market is vital to determining you know key trade zones and pinpointing high probabilities entries and exits and every morning before the market opens we do our homework in preparation for the current day and we draw in our key trade zones on the charts we pretty much this is our daily routine okay and then so after the opening bell then we just look to apply our intraday trading tactics and strategies which I don't have enough time to go into here but at this point now our homework is done after the opening bell we're looking for a combination of conditions that have been met that pretty much create the right circumstance for high odds, high reward, low risk trading opportunity. And ultimately, our goal is two to one, okay, reward to risk or better. We're not looking to scalp the market. We're looking for two to one. I've got plenty of examples coming up here. I just wanted to kind of build that foundation, all right? And then I'll, and then I'll get to some questions at the end, all right? So let's just quickly take a look at how the strategies performed in our live trading room since day one when we first started implementing this in our live trading room okay since we first started back in August okay just with one contract okay average price now we, we've been doing one to two contracts so this is all based on one contract average price so if we go all in two contracts it's based on average price if we go in with just one contract, it's based off of just one contract. Okay, we've had a total net profit of seventeen thousand. Okay, one hundred ninety-six days up until twenty-six yesterday. We're right at around seventy percent. We got a profit factor of two point three. Okay, our average per month is seventeen hundred. So I mean, if you're trading two contracts, um, what was that thirty-four? About thirty-four hundred dollars a month. So. Um, you can see in here we, we've had some consecutive losing days. I've even had a losing week here and there. But the thing is, is we're not experiencing any major drawdowns. Okay, I've had a losing week here and there, not very often. And when it is, it's very small. But the majority of my weeks, you know, the majority of the weeks are, are profitable weeks. And the thing here is, is too, is our average profitable day is 210 or 209 versus 178. So this is what this is what you've got to have to have that edge you've got to have a decent winning percentage even if you're the thing is is if you're 50 percent but you've got better reward to risk or more favorable reward to risk you can you can have a 50 percent you can even have a 40 percent but you have to have a three or four reward to risk okay we're, we're getting about one and a half to two to one reward to risk on our trades you see in here it's about 1.3 actually um, and uh, even with 70 percent we're, we're not hitting 80 90 percent we're only hitting 70 percent but the thing is our reward to risk is favorable okay so and you as you can see in here yeah we, we have a little bit of a pullback in here but nothing serious there's a little bit of a drawdown there but no big deal within a few days within a few trades maybe 10 more trades we're We've made back some back, some back, and then some. There are times where you know it, it can be a little challenging for a week or two, and then the market cycles, and then before you know it, we're taking off again. Um, you can see here just a choppy. You know the the, the market was choppy. The, our equity curve was choppy. So I mean that's that's the reality. I, I have not been able to hit ninety percent with a two to one reward or risk. That's just the reality of trading. Um, so. You know, there's a lot of folks out there that could claim that, but um, you know, I, I can't. I, we can't. We can't do it. Uh, Seventy, seventy-five percent. You know, two to one. That's and that's really, guys. That's all you need. That's all you need. 
So let's go ahead and look at some examples in here. And actually, in some of these examples, I've taken off. I've even taken off um, way too soon. So this was just the other day. Okay. Now there's a, there's it looks like there's a lot on the chart, and it's because this was taken right after we got done in the trading room. Okay. Um, so there's some notes on here. There's some trades on here. Um, and when I'm in the trading room, I'm explaining what's going on. Here's my thought process, why we're looking at this, and whatnot. So just real quick, for example, one of the things that we do look at is that 24-hour 50% of the day, okay, and that's right in here. This was also some pre-market support in here, and I even indicated my pre-market analysis. Guys, we break down through 15 to 17, then bigger picture bias has shifted back to the downside. And we could actually see some type of move, you know, almost a range extreme in here. And our range extreme actually is right in here. Okay. And in in the opening bell income strategy, we actually show you how to how to figure that range extreme out using the average true range. And uh, but this morning we tried to get short in here, literally missed it by a tick or two. Okay, I did not go in at the market. There is a signal that I use. What I look for in a move, in this type of situation, guys, what I'm looking for is that nicey tick to pull back. And I'll give you another freebie here. What I look, what I look at, I I look at this nicey tick as retail and wholesale. Okay, if I'm looking to sell the market, and here's another thing: if you just write this one thing down, it's going to save you from chasing the market. If you feel like you're always buying the low are always buying the high and selling the low. If you want to change that, write this one thing down. In a downtrend, okay, or when you're looking, when the bias, when your general bias is the short side, you can use that nicey tick to help time your entry, okay? And look to sell it up in here, above zero. That's retail, okay? If you're selling the market when that nicey tick's above zero, you're selling at retail prices. In, in an uptrend, if you're buying the market when the nice tick is below zero, you're buying wholesale. And that's what you want to do to make money. You've got to buy wholesale and sell retail, right? So that's one way of looking at it. And ever since applying that one little tactic, you know, I'm not I'm not buying the high and selling the low all the time. Okay. Very I mean, hardly ever, unless I do a breakout trade or something like that and, and it's a failed breakout. That's the only time. And then we've got a we've got a you know a strategy for actually stopping and reversing on that too. Um, you'll, we'll do that in the room sometimes, and I'll show you. There's an example in here where we actually did that. But um, this morning we just missed getting filled in here, and a lot of a lot of it had to do with this floor trader pivot right in there. Normally, when the market moves down like this, we'll get that nice tick pull back to zero, and we'll look to short the market on a on a on a breakaway like this. And uh, the market just didn't pull back enough. This floor trader pivot in here at 14 and a half pretty much tripped the market up. So we were trying to get short in here, missed it again by a couple ticks just in front of our zone in here with our stop just above our zone. Okay, because we want to look to position in where we've got more favorable reward to risk. Now, now we could have shorted this in here, but I don't have favorable reward to risk there because I'm looking for, you know, three to five to six points. I'm not looking for a point and a half here, you know, I'll scale out on half the trade with a small, you know, a small gain, but then I'm making sure I'm getting one and a half or two R on that second position of the, of the trade. We finally got in the market back in here. This was the next best trade setup, and there are some other things that, um, this is the volume weighted average price. If you don't have that on your charts, um, you should at least look at it because once you put it on your charts, um, you won't want to trade without it. When I first put it on my charts, I was like, holy cow. So I won't trade without it. Um, and uh, the only time we'll look to enter in between zones is if we've got a trade set up off that volume and average price. Because especially in a trending market, institutions tend to uh, uh, step in at or near that volume and average price. So it'll tend to act as a support of resistance, a force line, if you will. And uh, so on this day, we ended up, I, we, we shut the room down at 1230, so I ended up taking off. I had a busy afternoon. 
um, so I could not continue to trade. And uh, but our two R was hit in here. Um, anyone who held on uh, that that was eventually hit. And on this day, we weren't even thinking long. We didn't. It, it wasn't even in our vocabulary. And there's a reason. You can see. You will. I mean, in the opening bell, what we teach is there are certain things we're looking for in the market internals, and um, that identify more neutral. Okay. Um, and more bearish. When the internals are sustaining these levels like this, this is your S and P advanced decline line. This is your NYSE New York Stock Exchange advanced decline line. And when they're sustaining strongly bullish levels like this, even though you're going to get these little pullbacks in here, you've got to maintain a short side bias, otherwise you're going to get ran over. So you can use the internals to help gauge whether or not to just focus on shorts that day or whether or not you want to fade your key trade zones on that day. When the internals are more neutral, you know, up in here, you're focusing on more cons um, sideways if the market's more two-sided and you're focusing on uh, pot potentially um, both sides where you can go long and short and then when they're more one directional like this you want to just stay focused on shorts now if they're above you know for example if the S&PD line is pushing above plus 200 above, above plus 350 you want to stay focused on long trades um, so in general okay there are times that and especially in the morning, sometimes the market will gap up and then trend lower the rest of the day. So there are some things that we use to kind of help gauge that says, okay, market opened up higher, opened up strong, but the overnight, you know, that was just during overnight. Now it's it's showing weakness in here and we need to potentially, you know, look, we can actually take the short trade. There are times that are like that. On this day, this was last Friday, choppy day. Market trade in a six to eight point range in here. You see that nicey tick, um, and and back on this one, you can see the majority of the price action on this nicey tick is below zero. Okay, that's downside momentum. Okay, in a in a strong downtrend, real quick guys, your sentiment extremes are going to be topping out around 400 to 600, and you're going to see you're going to see lower extremes around minus 800 or so. Okay. Now look at this day. You can see it had a downside bias this, this morning, and then and then the momentum just kind of fizzled out, and it was more neutral. Uh, Yellen was speaking in here at one o'clock, and that's why. Um, but on this day, you know, we actually we actually shorted this in here, and was looking to short it again. And then I was reading uh, this market, and it looked like. Uh, with this rejection in here, it looked like we're going to get a, a bounce up from here and potentially take out this area uh, and potentially move up into this area, up into my next zone. But we ended up holding, but I ended up scratching the trade. Capital preservation is first and foremost. Okay, so sometimes you just have to scratch the trade. If you're not, if you're not, if the market's not doing as expected, you know, we'll scratch the trade and and look for the next setup. And um, on this day, the market ended up breaking down. We shorted this in here again, and we just didn't get that follow through. Now, on this trade, some folks in the room actually profited in here um, by shorting this in here. Some folks in the room actually shorted it a little bit higher, looking for an average price, and they actually got a small gain on that. But remember, I'm going for 1R to 1.5R. So I'm looking for, the, for a little bit bigger gain, and when the markets aren't there, uh, unless you get real close to the edge, the consolidation extreme, um, you know, sometimes we nail it, a couple ticks, if not a point, point and a half off the low of the day or off the high of the day, and other times, you know, you just you just don't nail it. I mean, that's just, that's the reality of it. Um, and then this afternoon, there was a setup in here that was good. Um, here we go. We got confluence. Look what we got. We got 50% of the day. We've got the volume average prices right in there. We've got our zone in here, major key trade zone support uh, after broke, after it was broken the upside. You can see that reaction we got. This was worth just about two points, not a whole lot. Like I said, there just wasn't a whole lot of opportunity last Friday. And it's Friday afternoon too. So, And then on this day, 
guys, you can see as this market's moving up in here, okay, you can see we, we're, we're trading up off of pre-market support, moving up into pre-market resistance, got the all-time high in there as well. We actually shorted this as this market was moving up into this area because as it's moving up, you can see we're not getting a whole lot of upside momentum. Okay, and look at this too. Remember when I talked about how more neutral? Okay, so that means we could take both sides. Now we've got pro we got the AD lines moving higher, but you can see they're not really pushing. I mean, we're barely positive here, and in fact, a nice AD line. We actually have negative divergence when you compare the S and P D line with the nice AD line because we're positive over here and we're really negative still over here. So chances are. Uh, back, you know, at this time of day, chances were we'd get a reaction back down in the, into this area, but the market ended up holding the volume and average prices in here. This is a good example of if you're not going to trade, if you're going to trade in between the zones, this is why you want to look to position potentially at around those volume and average prices, because it's usually, you know, those are usually likely turning points. So small gain on that day. Um, on this day, it was a beautiful day. Um, the market had opened up three, six, nine, twelve, and about fifteen minutes into it, we ended up buying this right in here. You can see that nicey tick pulling back to zero. This was very similar. This very similar setup to that that first example I went over, but it, it's you know that was a short. This is a long. I was looking for that nicey tick to pull back to zero to get um, short. Here's a scenario where the AD lines are open up strong. You can see how we're opening up strong in here, plus 350, plus 1400. Okay, that's almost on the verge of strongly bullish. So we just pulled back into support in here. When the IC tick pulled back into to zero, buy it at the market. Got a little reaction. First target was hit. Second target was eventually hit up in here. There's uh, um, and slow or zone. And these are pre market. Market pulled up in our zone. Look to. This is the value that volume average price 50% of the day. Consolidating uh, and eventually breaking higher. So, here we'll choppy morning. Um, as you can see, the market is moving lower. We're not really pulled back, we normally get. So we ended up shorting this in here and making a small gain um, in here plus one plus four and a half had position on ended up scratching scratching that scratching half the position on that, that one and then this um, it looked like we could get the two R in here um, and then things kind of failed when we had this momentum shift um, right in here the market had consolidated so we had moved lower pulled back, this is where we shorted that, back into our key trade zone, started to follow through and we just, buyers were active in here, couldn't buy, uh, and pretty much defended the support zone and we broke to the upside, this is where we scratched our trade and we could have reversed in here but um, you know I wanted to see uh, some our 50% of the extended trading hour session was up in here and I like to see that broken um, you know, otherwise, because we could have gotten some responsive sellers up in here, um, but uh, the market ended up pushing higher. Now we've got a momentum shift. You can see how the nice tick is pushing up. Um, we're taking out key levels over here in the S&P 80 line, up top right. We're taking out the high in the nice 80 line. Now we're still negative, but the market had gapped down. See, here's our prior day close up in here. But we've taken out 50% of these. I love 50%. 50%. I love 50%. So um, you, you you need to start really paying attention to to those on your charts. I'm telling you, it will. It, it could make all the difference in your trading if you're struggling a little bit. If you feel like you're almost there, it's just like, what am I missing? Um, that 50% volume and average price. Um, those just those things alone. Even if you don't, you're not interested in the key trade zones. Those things alone, I think you should add to your charts. Um, and um, 
I have I've even added it to the internals in here. So, um, but we've got a setup when you've got a momentum shift like this, when that nicey tick, NYSE, New York stocks, New York stock exchange, not IC is in India Charlie nicey, yeah nicey tick is New York stock exchange tick. It's a, it's the stocks that are up ticking versus the stocks that are down ticking. You can look it up on Investopedia to get the exact you know. Um, definition of it, um, but um, when that nice tick pulls back, we've got a lot of confluence here. When the nice tick pull back to zero, so if we buy it in here, we're buying it wholesale, right? That's what we want to do, and we're in our key trade zone. We took that long right in there. That was a beautiful trade, um, and easily, you know, quickly made. You know, we had a small loss in here. We made it right back, um, and then some folks traded this later on that afternoon. Even though we did not put in a new high, you can see we're holding up in here. That nicey tick is holding minus 400, which is up, which is uptrend pullback sentiment extreme minus 400 to maybe minus 600. Same thing here. See how these bodies are holding minus 400 in there? We're not seeing you know minus six, minus 700. You might see these wicks down in here, but prices are being rejected. We talked about that earlier. And um, I've got about 15 minutes. I better wrap this up um, so we can get to some questions. We had this was another clean trade setup. We actually had a a golfing pattern in here too. That kind of also supported the idea of getting long in there. So let me fly through these examples so we can get to some questions here. On this day, um, right between our two zones, market consolidated, pulled back. Now this one here exhaustion okay this was just exhaustion in here you can see for the most part during that consolidation we're not getting a whole lot of upside but we're not getting a whole lot of downside either and the bigger picture the bigger picture actually supported the idea of buying this market um, and um, the AD lines also uh, as you can see in here earlier on um, they were trading higher and the other thing too as we made new lows in price, look at this. Uh, where's our? It's right in here somewhere. As we made new lows in price, guys, look at what we've got in the AD lines. We've actually got positive divergence. Okay, so that supported buying this in here. Okay, I ended up scratching the trade mainly because it's pulled back. As soon as it pulled back, I wasn't sure if that was an exhaustion. Um, and then I noticed the positive divergence, but I already scratched half the trade. Uh, but after that market pulled back, it was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> something's happening here. And then I saw that positive divergence, I was like, oh, wait a minute, no, we need to hang with this. So we held on to the remaining part of the trade and got, you know, plus 275 on the entire trade. Uh, the rest of the day, the market just consolidated. See how that volume average price is holding as resistance and confluence with our zone. Um, and then eventually uh, the market made it a new low here. Pulled back, retested prior day close, and that was it. It was down the rest of the day. Um, on this day in here, looks like a choppy morning, but see, uh, if you look in the morning and you read these internals right correctly, uh, and you've got a good understanding of the bigger picture context of the market, you could take advantage of these these moves. And one of the things that I found out is that right around 9:45 about 10 to 15 minutes after the market opens there's usually a decent move so on this day we ended up shorting this right in here as this market was moving up okay because you can see just a lack of upside momentum okay we opened up here we moved up but you can see the market's just kind of stalling out up in here so we shorted that in there made a quick seven and a half point gain on that trade Hey Craig, we're looking okay. at about two and minutes. Then on the left. next trade, we ended up two minutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Two, Thanks. I didn't see that. No worries. All right. Well, then let me jump forward here. We can. I didn't realize that. I thought I was good till six thirty. Um, I mean, I, I've just got a couple more examples left, but you can see how the market kind of respects our zones, and it, it's not. It's not that it's respecting our zone. It's just that we're pulling these zones off of, um, you know, previous price action. So, you know, if, yeah, you can go to tradingconceptsinc.com 
Reed, are you able to put that in there for me, the, the website? We've got actually a DVD with online access to recording of a live webinar that I did, including uh, some live trading days and uh, a live Q&A coaching sessions where everything is fully disclosed, okay, everything that I've talked about and then and, and more, much more actually. And um, right now we've just launched this uh, again recently and we're offering – anybody who has purchased the opening bell, we're offering 30 days free access to our live e and trading room to pretty much accelerate your learning of the material. You know, however, if you enroll you know, today, we'll add another 30 days. Okay, so pretty much get 60 days free access to the live e-mini trading room. All right, and this we're giving this away. Okay, so it's up to you. Um, I mean, we're pretty much giving this away: two payments of 297, a world payment of 497. All right, you're going to learn a lot for for uh, for the cost. Um, and in fact, I've had people tell me you're giving it away. Um, and uh, I'm going to be updating it later this year, and everybody who has it will get those updates for free, and we'll probably end up bringing the price up. But a uh, couple questions real quick, if that's okay, Reed. Um, are the latest you – know, we have some break-even trades and so forth. Um, uh, do, we, do we just trade stocks? I mean, you can use this method on stocks if you wanted to. You know, the market internals – are pretty much geared towards use trading the e-minis. Um, Harry, when you say sell retail, do you mean sell to retail? No, no, sell retail. Retail, sell at retail prices and buy at wholesale prices. That's what I mean. Make sense? Um, how do you determine it's not a reversal level? You can, there are things we're looking for. For example, if it is a, re, what we're looking for is positive divergence, you know, divergences. We're looking for a complete lack of upside or downside momentum, momentum depending on the context of the market to determine whether or not, you know, it's likely the market's going to reverse there and so forth. I mean, I, there's a 200 page PDF that goes with this and it's about three and a half hours of instruction, not to mention 30 days of trading, you know, live in the, in the, in the, in the trading room and whatnot. But um, our, you know, if you go to this web page down in here or just go to tradingconceptsinc.com, if you go directly to this page, um, that'll get you. You can watch a quick video that Todd did um, and get pretty much the gist of, of everything. So if you want, you can email me, Craig, at tradingconceptsinc.com. All right. So um, I appreciate uh, you allowing me to step in here, Reed. I appreciate the time. And, and guys, thanks for watching. And I hope, you know, hope you've, um, you know, gotten a lot out of this.